Mike Sellers. Mike Sellers is here to find out if you've been working on your project. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I didn't say it was a funny one. All right. I just said it was, was one. How is the project going? How many of you have decided to do the nonprofit option? Good. Good. That's very good. Uh, it's nice to give them something to choose from, and, and it's possible they will want um, a hybrid, maybe of a couple of different things, maybe they'll, they'll want to go to main sites, but the nice thing is, again, with CSS and all that, um, you know, there's a, there's a, a, a good chance that you, you can take these, these things together or whatever, so that's great. The folks that aren't doing the nonprofit option, um, ideas of what you are working on. Portfolio website and platform. Sounds good. Um, other, ide other ideas, thoughts. What is hanging you up? Is there, uh, I, I, mean, I, I said that like an accusation, right? Uh, I, I, I don't mean it to sound like that. I should ask this. I should have put it in a more positive tone. Is there anything that, that's holding you back or hanging you up? Or, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Well, I, I thought, yeah, I, I thought maybe that was it. It's like, what's hold up? It's like, yeah, you're just too ugly, you know? Sorry. Uh, I can't pay attention in class because of that. Uh, anyhow, um, well, you know, remember, at this point, there's always a chance to, to change it, right? And if you've done good as far as separating the presentation from the content, then um, it, it should be pretty easy to go and change it. Remember that at the design at the design phase a couple of things to, to keep in mind about the design phase and first of all is we talk about the different stages of the design right we talk about um, oh what are the fr uh, phrases they use strategy which is the goals scope which is the requirements, um, structure, which is sort of the site map or structure chart, um, skeleton, which is the wireframe, and finally the prototype, which they call surface. We've got to keep with the whole S theme here. That's one way I remember them. Now, all of these are important, but how can I put this? The higher they are, the more critical they are to nail in the design. In other words, if you have issues here, you can address them. No big deal surface air, uh, layer. In other words, if you look at it and say, gee, I don't like the colors, okay, well, we'll change the colors then. That's not that big a deal, all right, or, or whatever. Skeleton, we don't like the wireframe, okay, well, we can tweak that. So if you don't get these things dead on in the first pass, that's okay, all right. Um, if anything, um, as I said before, sometimes you, you put up a plan or a prototype to be criticized so that people can look at it and say, oh, that's horrible, you know, I want it to be, and then you find out what they do want. So if there's issues on that layer, it's, it's not that big of a deal. You want to make sure you nail these. You want to make sure you're very clear about what you're doing on the site and what your goals are and what items, you're, what content you're going to put on the site to help you achieve those goals. Because remember, that's the first two phases. Um, if I can, uh, so again, so the fact, you know, that it looks ugly doesn't bother me a bit. <laughs> All right? Because we can change that, and if you follow good coding uh, guidelines, that can be changed. Get feedback from other folks in the class, or other people uh, as well, prior to that. And, uh, but even if you turn it in for the design and it's still ugly, 
that's not a big deal. I'd much rather have that than you totally miss the boat on these things. All right. Um, let me talk about, so, so yeah, you know, in, in how do I want to say this? From my perspective, it's comforting that you're far enough along to have a prototype that's ugly. <laughs> All right? Uh, as opposed to not having started it or not really being sure what your goals are or anything like that. So the fact that you're that far along to create an ugly prototype, well, that's, that's good. That's a win in my book. All right? Other things, other issues that people are having that, that, that could be holding them back. Yes? Well, and, and I would hope that that doesn't become an issue. I can bug them to get, uh, to provide more information. I know they said they had a meeting one day this week. What day is today? Tuesday? I guess it was yesterday. I know I got an email from them. I, I know I got an email from them saying uh, that they were meeting to, to finalize their mission statement and do this or that. I, I'll make a point to bug them and I'll post anything that we have for Angel. Keep in mind, what do you do if you don't have content? Well, in terms of the prototype, you can use Greek text, or you can, you know, you may not know exactly what all they want to say, but maybe you could mock up a mission statement, take something from their article, and, and use that. But they should be providing a lot of the content and, and a lot of the links. Oh, they did have a mission statement? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, again, um, the bigger thing, again, the bigger thing is to be sure that you have these things sorted out. In other words, you may know that you want a link about um, hospitals. Now, what specific hospitals are there? You, know, you could put the Cleveland Clinic on there or Mayo Clinic or whatever and, and trust that they will provide the, the final content in time. So you could, you could take your best shot at it and, and trust that they'll have the final content in time. That's an excellent question. And believe me, I mean, that's a problem in real projects as well, you know. And I'm, I'm not, how do I want to say, it? I'm not criticizing our group. I'm speaking more in terms of uh, past projects that I've worked on is, is a lot of time working with clients is very much a uh, hurry up and wait scenario. We've got to have the site. We've got to get it done. We've got to get it done. We've got to get it done. Uh, what's your email address? Oh, well, we, we haven't defined that yet. We'll get it to you, you know. <laughs> and what is, uh, you know, what's your logo? Oh, someone's working on that. We'll get it to you, you, you know, that sort of thing. So uh, I'm not saying these folks are like that, I mean, or will be like that, but that is a, a, that, that is a, uh, a pitfall in working through projects. It's very much, there's a sense of urgency, but you need something from them, and, and sometimes it's a long time in coming. You know, again, this is just a, a past experience thing. So if you do experience a mild version of that in this case, um, well, you've gotten a real educational experience. One of my one of my professors said something to the effect. One of my education professors said that actually, uh, you know, whenever you do something, you know, when you're done with it, it's always good to think about like why was that good? Why was that not good? Right? It's called metacognition. You think about your thought process and, and your work process. And, and his point was it's a better learning experience if things don't go so well. <laughs> right? Because if things go good, it's like, yep, I, I wrote the website and it was, it was great. Everyone loved it and it won awards. You know? What do you think back and reflect about that? You know? However, if it was, <laughs> you know, if it was a giant mess, you know, you look back, oh, well, okay, well, I didn't plan the goals right in advance, and I didn't think of doing this, and I didn't think, you know, there's a lot sometimes uh, of learning, you know. Sometimes when things come too easy to you, you know, there's, there's less round for, uh, you know, there, there's less, uh, less learning involved. So hopefully, uh, again, um, we'll be able to do both, that, that, that you'll be able to work through any of these issues and think about what makes them and still end up with a successful product at the end. I'm not suggesting, by the way, bombing your project for that. I'm just saying that if you, do, if you do run into some sort of obstacles, think of them that way. Think of them that way. Is, is sometimes obstacles are good because that's really where, where a lot of the true learning comes in. Right? Um, other questions and or comments? 
Let me highlight the most common mistakes people make, all right, so that you can avoid these, all right? There's my theme music there, indicating it's time for my top ten list of most common mistakes. <laughs> One most common mistake is goals that don't relate to the subject matter of the site. Let me give you a for instance. And this is one case where I might deviate a little bit from what they say in a textbook. For example, it's not a goal to say the site is going to have a good navigation or, or a simple navigation, uh, user friendly. It's not a goal to say your site's going to be user friendly. It's not a goal to say your site is going to be readable. Of course it's going to have a good navigation. Of course it's going to be readable. Of course it's going to be user friendly. That goes without saying. That's just Web Design 101, right? So don't state that as a goal. Of course it's a goal. Make your goals related to the content of the site, not the design of the site, OK? Unless there's something very, very, very specific to your site, which I would really doubt. Uh, that would be a really huge exception. So for example, let, let's talk about the, the, the uh, the, the nonprofit, because that's one that we at least have some familiarity with, even if you're not working on it. A goal might be to, you know, one goal might be to provide uh, resources for the families of people that have been recently diagnosed with cancer. All right? That's a good goal, because it relates to the content of the site. It doesn't relate to basic web design principles. A bad goal would be something like, uh, this site's going to have a clear navigation. Well, yeah, of course it is. That's not really a goal. Another way to think of it is the reason that you're creating the site and the reason that people want to visit your site. All right? You know, there are some very talented web designers in this class. All right? I genuinely mean it. There's some great work being done in this class. But, Really, none of you are so good <laughs> that people would come to see your website just to see how great of a web designer you are. All right? And that's true for, for you, me, and for just about every web designer in the world. People are there for the content. You know, uh, Content is king or queen, depending on uh, how you want to phrase it. Right? Content is what brings people to the website. Therefore, the goal should be expressed in terms of the content and not the web design. Yeah, you want to do everything you can to make a great looking site. That's understood. And a user friendly site. That's understood. Your goal should relate to the content of the site. So that is probably the, the most common problem that I, that I see, is that people think of the goals um, in, in terms of uh, more, more of just stating general web design principles instead of talking specifically about the content. So that's probably the most common problem. Second problem I would say would be to, um, to uh, uh, invert goals and requirements or strategy and tactics. Let me give you an example. All right. It would not be a goal to say, this site is going to have an About Us page that will allow people to find out how to email us and uh, what phone number to use and, and so on and so forth. That's not a goal. You're not saying, gee, I want to put up the site so I can create an About Us site page. That's, that's why I'm creating the site, because we've got to have an About Us page. A goal would be something like, we want to we make it easy for people to contact us to volunteer, donate, or whatever. All right? That's a goal. That's what you hope to achieve by creating this site. When the day is done, you're not going to celebrate if you've created an About Us page. You're going to celebrate if you've provided a means for people and you have attracted more people to volunteer and if you've attracted more people to donate. So again, goals are what you want to achieve 
the requirements or the tactics or what you're going to do to help achieve that. So yeah, if, if one of your goals is to attract more uh, volunteers, to attract more uh, donors and so on, one of your tactics or one of your requirements to achieve that goal might be to have a very clear contact us page that talks about you know, how to get in touch with us if you want to donate or volunteer or whatever. So make sure you don't confuse those two. When you're talking about the strategy or the goals, it's what does the organization want to get out of the site? What does the user want to get out of the site? Not necessarily the specific content that's going to give them that. Because there could be a lot of different ways you could achieve a goal, right? And part of your job as a web designer is figuring out the most appropriate ways. Um, making, uh, you know, encouraging people to uh, volunteer, all right? There's a lot of ways that you could do that. You could do that with testimonials. You could do that with um, any number of different other techniques, statistics about how many people are affected with cancer, um, that sort of thing. So um, the, 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 the goal might be to attract more volunteers. The tactics might be an emotional appeal ver, uh, by having someone tell their story. Uh, or a logical appeal by talking about how widespread the problem is. Or attempting to talk about you know, some, some relevant quotes about community and community service that will inspire people to want to fill this role. A lot of different tactics you could take to achieve the same goal. And your job as a web designer is to figure out what the appropriate ones are for that particular thing and then put it into action. Create your page to enforce that message. So I guess that's the second most common error is confusing tactics and strategies or confusing requirements and goals. The next common um, mistake or, or omission or whatever is not having requirements that match up with your goals. All right? You should be able to match up any requirement that you list with at least one of your goals, right? If we're defining three goals for, an organi for the organization, three goals for the users, if you have something on your list of requirement that doesn't relate to either of those sets of goals, then why bother having it, right? Um, with the thought, again, that anything you add to your site is going to distract people from the important stuff. So, you know, if you decide that you have, you're going to have a page of um, recipes, let's say, on, on this site for the nonprofit, which you could think, well, gee, you know, th th that might be valid that people want, um, you know, recipes of uh, people that are ill or, or people of families. Now, you have to say, you know, gee, does that support one of the goals? If it does, fine, include it. If it does not, then don't include it. All right. The reverse is true, too. So every requirement should map to at least one goal. Now, remember, it could map to a couple different goals. And that's really where, um, where a website can be effective, right? Because keep in mind that if the organization has a totally different set of goals, than the users of that, then there could be problems, right? You know, there has to be at least some sort of common ground between them where their goals sort of align so you're providing the content and satisfying uh, your own goals. The reverse is true as well. Every goal that you have on your list should map to at least one requirement. So if you say one of your goals is to attract more donors, there should be some content on the site geared towards attracting more donors. Right? If not, then you miss the boat, right? You just define something as one of the six most important goals uh, between you and your users, and yet you're not putting anything on the site to address that. Ooh, that should be a red flag, right? So I guess that would be sort of the third kind of error that people make. Fourth kind of error that people make would relate to the structure. The structure is not just a structure chart. The structure section should also contain a justification of why you pick that. All right? 
if you remember back my example that I've posted to Angel, I talk about doing a site for uh, listeners of jazz music, people that are new to jazz music. And I talk about how I'm organizing it, and I decided to organize it by instrument. And I described why I thought that was a better organization than some of the other possible ways of organizing it. All right? Uh, in other words, one of the possible ways to organize it might be by, you know, time frames. Musicians of the early 1900s, mid-1900s, and so on. Um, I mentioned that you could organize it stylistically, you know, regardless of the era that it was played. If they played this style or that style, you'd put them in the page. But then I argued or I discussed why for the users that were my target, the way I chose was better than the other alternatives. And you should do a similar thing. So any piece of data or any, any, any group of data that you can come up with, you can organize it a bunch of different ways. You know, that's, that's a given. I, I've, I've never seen a project that there weren't at least a couple different ways that were at least on the surface reasonable ways of organizing the data. All right. Um, it's your job to figure out which is the best and, and to justify it. All right. It doesn't have to be, you know, extensive. If, if you look at my lead, if you look at my example, um, I, I would give you what I would reasonably expect. But one common mistake is to omit that justification and just show a structure diagram. Next common error with the skeleton and with the wireframe. Keep in mind what the purpose of the wireframe is. It's meant to be, give a, just a sense of the overall layout of your pages. The common mistake that people hear, and you're going to like this one, is doing too much work for, uh, on that one. All right? Uh, too much work a couple different ways. First of all, drawing a wireframe for every single page, even though they all follow the same structure. Right? You don't need to draw a wireframe for every page if they're all laid out the same. If they all have a banner and if they all have navigation going down the left of the page and they all have a content area. The fact that the content's different, well, of course the content's going to be different on each page. If they follow the same general layout, then you don't need to make a separate wireframe for them. You only need to make the wireframes for pages that look different. And again, for the size of the website that you're talking about, it would be very reasonable to have just one wireframe. All right? And it would also be reasonable uh, to have maybe a second if there was a set of pages, a page or two, or a set of pages that deviated slightly. Again, the most logical one I can think of is you might have a photo gallery uh, that looks a little bit different than the rest of the pages. You might lay that out different just because of laying out images or whatever. All right? But again, you know, don't, don't do more than you need to do in that section. You know, it doesn't have to be a work of art. It just needs to give an idea. You know, remember why you're doing this. You're doing this to communicate to the client, and you're doing this to communicate to other people that might be working with you on the project of what it's going to look like. So you, you don't need to overkill, all right, on that. Finally, the last part, common errors. The one that always makes me giggle on the prototype, and yes, I, I actually do giggle when I hear this, all right, is when people copy my text verbatim that says, I'm not going to do a prototype because we've covered that in class, all right? And I've had people do that, all right? I'm allowed to do that because, first of all, I'm not getting a grade. And secondly, if I were getting a grade, I would be the one giving myself the grade. So I would say, yeah, that's reasonable. You, you went over that in class really well. You did a great job, despite being the fact of being menaced by a, a spider. You did a bang-up job on that. So therefore, yes, you'll get, you don't have to do a prototype. You, however, do have to do a prototype. All right? You have to do a prototype. So don't repeat my text. You have to do it. Now... It's always a little dicey on a prototype, right? What is a prototype? Another word for it would be a model or, or a rough draft. It would be like a rough draft in a term paper. Um, you neither want it to be perfect, nor do you want it to be completely rudimentary. You want to find that right 
amount of finishedness. All right. You don't. You know, it doesn't need to be perfect because what if the um, what if the, your client just rips it apart and says, "I hate this." You know, I don't. You know, I don't like anything about it. I want every single piece of this to be redone. Then you've spent a lot of time that you're going to have to go and rework. All right. So you don't necessarily even want to shoot for perfection. All right. You don't want to spend the time to shoot for perspective for perfection knowing that it may be ripped apart and you're going to have to go back and change it all right but you do want to do enough to give an idea of what your vision of what the finished page is going to look like so what does that mean i would say you know implement each section of the wireframe if you're going to have a banner create pretty much what your banner is going to look like show where you're going to have a navigation and what that's going to look like and give an idea of the rough content for a few pages, all right? That's sort of the right scale. And to be sure, you know, th there's no magic formula I can say, this is what you're gonna shoot for in the prototype. Yeah, you know, there's some wiggle room there. You know, they don't all have to be exactly at the same stage of completion. But in this case, we're actually gonna run these past uh, the client, uh, and they can offer feedback if they wish. Um, so you want something that they can look at. Um, all the discussion in the world, and, and that's the interesting thing, and that's the scary thing in a way, is that a lot of times when you do this, some people will skip right through all these and just look at the surface and say, oh, okay, that, because that's something tangible, that's something they can see, all right? And really your job as a web designer sometimes is to educate folks that, no, you need to also concern yourself with this. But you know what? If you've done your design right, you can almost figure out the other things based on looking at the prototype. In other words, you've seen how you've structured it. You can tell that from the prototype. You can see what, what content you're putting on based on the prototype, or at least some of the content. And you can even get a sense of the goals of the site by looking at the prototype and, and some of the sample content. All right, I hope that cleared it up. Um, I will, again, my, my suggestion is that you bring your stuff to class because, you know, we are likely to have, you know, there will be some days where I will, between now and the end of the semester, where I will say, let's work on, a, uh, on our uh, project the rest, of the, or the rest of the time. All right? Any questions on any of this? All right. Let's talk about tables and accessibility and a few things that we need to wrap up from last time. Yes. Uh-huh. Is there a way to design? Is there a way to design for the elderly? Well, what do you think, class? Designing for the elderly. Okay. Uh, number one, I would say would be make the make the links very uh, easy to click on. Uh, by easy to click on, I mean uh, don't make the the text for the link so tiny. Make a, a big area for for the user to to click on. That would be one thing I would say. Because again, you know, if you think about it, age-related conditions really are almost a mild form of a whole set of disabilities, right? In other words, elderly people aren't necessarily blind, but they don't have the best vision. Um, again, so, I'm making generalities, of course. Um, people, uh, older people might not be deaf, but they probably don't have the best hearing. They might not have, you know, horrible motor skills where they can't, you know, like paralysis, where they can't move their arms or, or whatever, but they might have severe arthritis. So a lot of the accommodations that you would do for those folks, you would just keep in mind to do it there. So I guess the one thing I would say is make the link targets um, big enough to click on. Other things that you would think of that, that could help... Uh, Large enough text, readable text, uh, adequate contrast between the text and the background. All right. 
other things. Yes? Yeah, easy navigation, straightforward navigation. Uh, nothing extraneous, you know, uh, nothing that could potentially confuse uh, people. Again, you know, I'm speaking in terms of very, very much generalities, uh, but you know, the the you know the fact is is that you know people of a certain age did not grow up with the internet, you know, um, whereas whereas younger folks, you know, they've had that their whole life, you know, so they're they're a little more savvy about, gee, this is an ad, versus this is part of the site, right? And you know that may sound to someone who is who's been who's grown up with the internet that might seem like a small thing, but but I I, I suspect that's probably a fairly big thing, you know, um, and therefore extraneous things uh, uh, avoid those. Um, a person, a, a, an older person, may not have necessarily a cutting edge computer. Again, that's a generality. So you wouldn't necessarily want to throw in a lot of extra stuff, um, you know, um, that could be potentially distracting or could put too much of a burden on that. Um, any anyone else think of uh, things? Transcripts for any audio that you'd have would be good. I guess those would be sort of the the basic guidelines I would say, um, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, beware, you know, do they have a dial-up connection, right? So, you know, maybe, maybe be, be cognizant of the size of your pages. Be aware of the sizes of pages that you have. So don't put gigantic uh, images on it. You know, it'll take forever to load. Um, it's a very good point. Do keep in mind, again, I'm speaking very much in generality. And I'm, I'm, I am speaking about people that, uh, many of which are like my own age. So I feel, <laughs> you know, based on my own experience, I feel it's okay to say that, like my siblings and, and, and all that. Um, and, and therefore, um, you know, these are just general generalities. There's, there's, some, there's, of course, some older people that do not fit that description. But if you're going to speak in general terms, that would probably be, those things would probably be the thing to do. Other questions? All right, tables and accessibility. Um, there's a couple of things that we can do to make our tables more accessible that falling in the principles of, uh, what do we call that, universal design, also benefit people that um, can see. One thing, for example, is we can have a caption on the table. And what is a caption on a table? A caption on a table is some text that explains what the table is. So if I remember right, our example last time was that we had a table that showed average temperatures for American cities for January through March. So we can put right after the table tag, we have an additional tag, which is a caption tag, which says that. Now. How does that appear? Oops. It will appear above the table like that. Now, obviously, something's wrong with our styling because that's very difficult to read. Let's go and fix that. All right. Remember, anything about the way it looks, we can handle via CSS. So I can go in and put on my caption tag, I can make the background white, the color black, the 
font size 2M. And we get something like that. So we can make it look however we want. Now, here's a question. What would it be better to do? All right. One option, one thing I could do is I could do this, what I did with the caption tag. Right? I put the caption tag, it's part of the table. I could do this. Put an H1 on here. Maybe make a couple of tweaks. And I could get it to pretty much look the same. That's a little bit different, I don't know, different font or bolded or whatever. But it's the same, it's essentially the same thing. And if it's not the same thing, I could, by just tweaking the styles a little bit, I could make it look the same. Which is a better approach to use? This approach with an H1 above the table or the approach of making a caption tag for the table. Which is better and why? We have a vote for a caption. Why did you vote for caption? Okay. Does anyone have a different opinion or a different reasoning behind it? Yes. Yeah. All right. You, you all, I think, are, are, are definitely moving on the right direction. The caption is a better way to go. Why? Again, think of what your HTML is supposed to show. Your HTML is supposed to show content. It's supposed to show meaning. And that H1, prior to the table, someone that can see makes the association that says that H1 belongs with that table because the H1 is right next to that table. All right. However, if, the, if it moves or if a screen reader is accessing it or whatever, a person is visually impaired could lose sense of that H1 being associated with the table. And another thing is in semantic terms, that truly is a caption for that table. All right, that's not a heading on the page. Yes? Can you put the caption at the bottom? Um, that's a good question. Let's see. Yeah, but it puts it on the top anyhow. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, but, it, but it seems like if you, like for example, if you put it inside a TR, um, yeah. I would wonder also if that would validate at the end or if you put it in a TR, if it would validate. But, again, the, the, you, know, I, 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 you, you want your code to be as descriptive as possible. That caption is, in a sense, part of that table. Therefore, we represent that by having that caption part of the table tag. All right. There's another tag, which I am going to have to look up. And I do this for two reasons. One is because I think I know the right tag, or actually it's an attribute. The other reason is I want to point out these resources in Angel. Because I don't necessarily expect everyone to remember this. It's not really in the textbooks. That's why I provided resources for it. This is something that a lot of people get deducted for, by the way, on the table assignment, is neglecting to put in uh, the accessibility code. So let's go here and find it. On this page from the University of Wisconsin, um, yeah, where 
on my screen or am I missing it? There we go. And this talks, so this is a good one, one to read because it talks about how a screen reader linearizes a table. What does linearize mean? It means like turn it into a straight line. So we who can see, whoops. We that can see can mentally look at this and say, well, that is the department for Blair Bundy. All right. However, when the table is read to them, it may not be quite so obvious. You don't get the distinguishment between the rows and the columns and all that. All right. The other thing they talk about is don't make your tables too complicated. In other words, don't try to blend two ideas into one table. In this case, they show two different branch campuses um, within the same table. All right. Ah, summary. See, I'm glad I looked it up. I would have guessed wrong. Summary is a little different from the caption uh, in that it, it uh, is more detailed. This table shows the average temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and so on and so forth. The summary again helps put it in context. People visually, uh, people that, that can see visually sort of get the context of the table whereas the summary makes it explicit for people that can't see. This really has no effect for people that can see. All right. Notice it's not visible on the page yet. Oops. If we look at the source, it's there, and the screen reader can pick it up to give context for people that are using a screen reader. All right. We have a few more ideas to explore with this. Um, Wednesday would definitely be a good. No, wait a minute. We don't meet on Wednesday. Thursday would be a good day for you to bring your project materials in because what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this up on uh, Thursday. Um, depending on where I wrap up, I'll either talk about the next topic or we may have time to work on our projects, show each other what we've done on our projects so far, get some feedback from your peers, get some feedback from me before it's time to turn it in. Yes? Could you use images in a table cell? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you could put, uh, in other words, you know, what you can put in this, what you can put in a TD is virtually any HTML code. So, yeah, you can put an image in there. Uh, yeah. Back or a link, by the way. Back to your question about moving the caption, can you uh, get that code? That is an excellent question. I don't know. I, I, have, I have never seen that. Um, I can take a stab at that. I could say float. Uh, right, because I'm not actually editing that. I could say something like... That didn't seem to work. I don't know. Yeah, that's a great question. I'm not sure. Um, you, you know, you can try it out. Try a quick Google search and see if you can find anything. All right. That's what I had. We'll see you over in labs.